Standing for his worship to Mary Pendle, Councillor Neil Buttwood. Would you uh, all remain standing, please? I just want to do uh, a minute silence for our, our dear friend. Uh, Morris Osfield, who passed away, God bless him, a, a loyal servant to this community. So can we remember his silence, please? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Mr Mayor, uh, can I offer my group's condolences uh, to the family of uh, uh, Maurice Horsfield? Um, I first met Maurice many, many years ago through his involvement with the E.B. Mines Museum, uh, of which he was a dedicated servant. He was a dedicated servant of the residents in E.B. Ward that he represented for 17 years. And uh, he, uh, together with himself, uh, was very interested in uh, flooding in E.B. and we worked closely together in order to try and reduce the risk of flooding. He will be very sad in this. His life was cut short. I know uh, he'd, he'd uh, aged uh, quite a lot, but he had many years still to give, and it's so sad that, uh, that his life was cut short in the way that it was. And uh, just to offer uh, our very sincere condolences that <coughs> is lost. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to the meeting now. Um, apologies. Mr Mayor, can I give apologies from Councillor Margaret Adams, <coughs> who is unwell? Thank you. 
Mr. Mayor, can I give apologies to Councillor Ruby Ann Warren and Eileen Ansel? Thank you. Mr. Mayor, apologies from Rosemary Kelly. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Ruby Ann Warren and there's an item there, and uh, actually an item will, will be added to the end of the meeting, and it's referenced to the blues. So this will be allowed, and it will be at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Thank you. Minutes of the council. There are two minutes to, uh, to look at the 29th of July and the 31st of August. Mr. Mayor, can I move the minutes? Thank you. Second, Mr. Mayor. Announcements. I have four announcements from the Mayor and the Leader of the Council. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got a couple of uh, announcements. Uh, first of all, just to update members around the discussions at council level and district leaders around county deals. Uh, previously, if members will be aware, there have been discussions around uh, unit trees, combined authorities, electric layers, etc. That <coughs> seems to be off the agenda at the moment, and the discussion seems to be around uh, county deal. What that county deal involves, or what it will look like, is still in the discussion, but the general consensus from Lancashire is that we should at least uh, explore the opportunities that are out there and have these initial ideas and thoughts so we know exactly what it's going to be and uh, what, how it will work, what the legal uh, position will be, how will it work in terms of voting, etc. So uh, I'll keep members informed as and when there is some further information available. Uh, secondly, I want to take this opportunity of uh, congratulating a number of residents from Pendle to be uh, awarded. Uh, the Pride of Lancashire Awards, which was held uh, I think a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, the first one is the Carer Award, which went to Susan Scorfield from Nelson. She's a long term carer herself and works supporting other carers. Secondly, uh, the Pride of Lancashire Award went to Laura Nuttall from Barry Ford. Uh, she volunteers as a member uh, on a number of community groups. Raising money for charity and is an ambassador for the McGrain Achievement Trust. And members will have seen on the uh, agenda the motion uh, Curry on the Street, uh, James Foy, uh, who's involved in Curry on the Street, uh, which supports homeless people and people with mental health problems in the borough. So I want to put on record congratulations to them three people from Kenya. Thank you. Um, I have an update. Um, I've visited uh, our twinning town um, of uh, Cray. Um, I spent two nights uh, in France. I've never eaten and drank so much in all my war days. Um, we have met new friends. We are now going to um, uh, have a, 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 a meeting between the judo people of, of Cray and the, the local judo in Trojan. So they two are going to meet and we're going to try and do a, a cross town judo competition. Uh, we're going to try and base it in Penn. So we'll see what happens there. So that was uh, a very eventful and we have lots of new friends. So there you go, friends. Thank you. Okay, now to five questions on noise uh, from the public to the leader. There are none. Um, uh, registered questions on notice, members of the Legal Committee Chairman and Representative outside bodies, otherwise on the agenda. That you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Following the announcement by Virgin Money today, uh, formerly Yorkshire Bank, that it is to close the branch <coughs> in Nelson, what action has been taken by Pendle Council? to try and avert the closure. Uh, first, I became aware of this when the announcement was made earlier on today. It is deeply disappointing uh, to hear this news. Uh, we've had other closures banks in, in Belgium and other parts of Pendle also. Uh, 
So I will write to uh, the bank tomorrow morning, uh, through our officers, we'll write to them and ask them and urge them to reconsider their decision. Mr Mayor, may I, as a supplementary, ask if the leader agrees with me that banks and the services that they provide within town centres are vital to the lifeblood, the footfall and the buoyancy of town centres and that to lose a, yet another bank uh, is another, um, oh well, I will say a pinprick in the balloon of prosperity rather than the nail in the coffin because I'd rather be a slightly more positive. But does he agree with me that we must make every effort to try and keep such services and facilities <coughs> in our town centres? Uh, I totally agree with Council Wick in what he says. In terms of the benefits which banks bring to our town centres are huge in terms of footfall. This brings people into our town centres who then go on and support our local businesses also. And second, there are people out there uh, who don't use online services. And I know banks are encouraging that, and that's the way it seems to be going. But there are people <coughs> still out there, a huge number of people, who will need to go into the bank and be dealt with on a face-to-face -face basis. So I agree, and I'll do my best to uh, write to the bank and try and urge them to do the U-turn. Thank you very much. Question number two is this is there from Tom. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, what impact has there been on council services as a result of fuel delivery problems? Thank you for that question. Uh, so far, we've managed to maintain the schedule of household and trade waste refuse collection. Uh, we are in daily contact with uh, the local uh, petrol station, namely Texaco and Morrison's uh, in Nelson. <coughs> Uh, and our drivers, drivers visit them as soon as they are informed of new supplies arriving. In terms of members of staff uh, having difficulty getting to work, it's not really a problem, uh, it's not noticeable impact, uh, and some of our staff are able to work from home. Thank you very much. Question number three, um, asked by Calvin Dorothy Lord. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, how many refugees from Afghanistan have been settled in Pendle since the withdrawal of the British and American troops? <coughs> Our officers have been working uh, quite closely with Lancashire County Council uh, and the response in Lancashire has been coordinated by uh, the County Council Refugee Resettlement Programme Team and the Government's Northwest Strategic Migration Policy Office. Uh, as it was agreed at the previous policy resources uh, committee meeting in August, uh, we've given our commitment to the council. Uh, at this point, we've not been requested to house any families. Mr. Mayor, supplementary. Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, could I ask uh, through you to the leader of the council uh, how many properties are available for refugees? Um, if and when uh, refugees are allocated to uh, settle here in Pembroke. Uh, <coughs> Wayne Forrest, who's leading this from a Pembroke perspective, is working closely with uh, the housing authorities. Uh, members will know we don't have our own housing, uh, but meetings have been taking place with uh, Calico and Sierra Housing. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact number of houses which David Whip is asking me, but I can get that information to you uh, tomorrow. Councillor Tommy. Uh, as a supplementary, Mr. Mayor, uh, does the leader agree with me that we should be more proactive in accepting refugees from Afghanistan? And it should be a question of um, asking to the same that we are welcoming them here instead of waiting for us to be requested to accept. Uh, this council has given a commitment to welcome refugees from Afghanistan and that commitment still stands. Uh, we have been in contact proactively with Lancashire County Council 
and ask them that we will assist in any way that we can. Thank you very much. Uh, question number four to the leader. She asked Brian Graham, uh, sorry, Councillor Graham. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what contingency planning has been put into place by Pender County in the event of power cuts this winter? Uh, I'm not aware <coughs> of any uh, indication so far regarding possible power cuts. But in the eventuality of threatened or actual power cuts, the council, along with other Lancashire councils and agencies, will respond through the Lancashire Resilience Forums, uh, which exists to deal with major emergencies and situations on a coordinated basis. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Yeah, can I, based on that question, can I just ask the leader, uh, in terms of the government announcement this morning to give £500 to the poorest households, that will be administered by councils. What steps has he taken place to ensure that that administration happens correctly? Uh, the announcement has only been uh, made this morning. Uh, we were working to consider uh, what available funding there is uh, for residents here in Pendle and the necessary policies will be put in place to make sure those who genuinely need this funding and need our help will get some. Question number five. Uh, five uh, Councillor Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, given this week's publication of data showing a fall in life expectancy for Pendle residents, and that Pendle is among the worst 25% local authority areas so affected, does the leader of the council agree that the levelling up fund from the government should be concentrated on improving life expectancy, health and life prospects for local residents. Thank you for the question. Uh, the Levelling Up Fund uh, is there to invest in local communities. It's an opportunity to reset the relationship between central and local government and puts councils at the heart of delivery uh, the government's ambitious programme to uh, improve uh, opportunities in all parts of the country. Uh, I agree, uh, it does uh, have targets and one of the objectives of the level of fund is life expectancy, health and life prospects for local residents and that is part of the objectives. Obviously it is far more uh, broader than that but it does contribute if we do have uh, a nice area, our environment is improved, with this good, decent development in the borough, <coughs> also have a knock-on effect in the long term <coughs> and the local residents. Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's supplementary. Um, in view of the answer that the Leader of the Council has just given, uh, could he outline the, uh, the details of the bid that was submitted by Pendle Council for the levelling up fund? And um, would he agree with me that that is mainly about improving the cultural offer in Colm? And would he further agree with me that it's a bit of a stretch getting from the cultural offer in Colm to increasing rather than reducing life expectancy and <coughs> the life prospects of local residents and their health? I think in terms of the bid uh, and the funding that potentially is available for Corn, uh, so in terms of what Councillor Wicker said, in terms of the cultural offer, uh, it's far more broader than that in terms of the offering to our local residents. And it's not just about directly investing in our health services, which the government is also do. It's also about improving people's lifestyles, making people more active, and getting people to enjoy themselves. And it has uh, long-term benefits for residents. I think this is a really complicated issue. There is no simple answer to it. But uh, rest assured, the government and we as a council will do what we can to improve the lives of our residents uh, and then keep pushing the government and trying to seek assistance wherever we can. Thank you. Question number six, to be asked by Councillor Tiffany. 
Um, Mr Mayor, can the leader provide information on the collection rate for the current and previous financial years of the Business Improvement District levy in Cobb? Unfortunately, I'm not in a position to do so. Uh, the information isn't available, but I will uh, ask officers to circulate information to all members of the council. Supplementary, Mr Mayor. Uh, given that the Policy Resources Committee considered a report on this issue two meetings ago and agreed to loan £40,000 to the Colm bid, on the basis of non-collection of uh, the levy from the businesses within the business improvement district area, um, isn't it remiss um, of the leader uh, not to have that information at his fingertips? Um, and secondly, Mr Mayor, could I ask if any uh, uh, of the Pendle Council uh, connected premises <coughs> in the Collins Business Improvement District have failed to pay their levy. I'm not sure of the second part of it. Again, I will get the information and make sure that it circulates to members. But in terms of the uh, meeting which Council Whitby refers to, my understanding is that there is some outstanding payments due to the Colm bid and that <coughs> Uh, will be looked at, and is being looked at, to make sure the right amount of funding will be going to the right places. And in terms of the payments and the information which the councillor Rick has requested, that will be circulated as soon as possible. Thank you. And that there uh, ends the question. Before we just move on to the next item, two things I want to mention. Please stay in the corner. And the next one is the camera to my left is not an official camera of the council. Okay? Thank you very much. Moving on. Uh, in seven, report by the leader of work uh, the policy resources committee. I'll do a report, Mr. Mayor. Moving on. My apologies. Uh, we'll do, um, Mr. Whitford, first one you've seen yet? Um, David, with Councillor David Whitford will do, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd, rather oh. not, I'd rather not be seen yet. All right. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could I ask, in terms of uh, the Cole Business Improvement District, um, given the answer that we've just had from the Leader of the Council, why did this authority agree to loan the bid £40,000? Now, I didn't dissent from the decision, but I thought it was based on uh, knowledge about the, the movement of funding uh, in and out of the bid. Um, uh, I understand, according <coughs> to the, the request for this 40,000 had been lodged sometime previous to the meeting um, and, and had been, um, um, how, how can I put it, um, uh, held back perhaps by the previous chief executive uh, who was probably thinking he was acting in the best interest of the council taxpayers of this borough. Uh, in not bringing the request to the committee and then clearly the current <coughs> administration fast-tracked it to a meeting and got the decision through. Um, I'm concerned, Mr Mayor, that um, this is not all that it seems and uh, I'd like very much for policy and resources uh, to reconsider this issue in the light of the, uh, some of the information, perhaps additional information, that I've just been asking for. Um, I'll leave it at that, Mr Mayor. Um, and I think that's my lot. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Mr Mayor. 
Um, a, a question for you to the leader, if I may, on the transfer of facilities and services to town and parish councils. Um, and I'd like to ask the leader, what is the response to you from the parish and town councils, given the importance of this to this council's budget? Thank you. We are having discussions with uh, the town and parish council. Uh, we'll be encouraged to come forward. Uh, some uh, the town council that we are interested in certain discussions are ongoing, it's early stages, but we are there and available to provide any necessary information to town and parish councils if we wish. Uh, so some of these items which we've discussed previously can be moved forward. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Councilman. Me. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Matt. Just in terms of a question for the leader, in terms of his response just now, um, I'm sorry to say it seems a bit of a wishy washy response, Mr. Matt, but can you just elaborate which town councils he's had discussions with and what services he's actually talking about, please? Uh, it's not a wishy washy answer. I mean, in terms of the discussions, there's been a meeting with. Uh, between uh, the government's working group and uh, the chair people and representatives of all the town and parish council have been encouraged <coughs> to come forward with their ideas as to which services they would be interested in and their discussions will continue. Okay, thank you. Now moving on to item 8. The appointment of Chief, Chief <coughs> Finance Officer and one Fire One Officer. Um, this is Mr. Richard. Can I move the recommendation as set out? Second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on now to live screenings of meetings. This is going to be moved by Councillor Dean. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. The motion reads that this council continues to live stream uh, full council meetings, that principal committee meetings also be live streamed to the council's YouTube channel, and that a report is presented to the Policy and Resources Committee on the implementation of the extended policy. Mr Mayor, it's two or three years ago now I think 2019, when live streaming of meetings uh, was introduced in this council chamber. And since then, we have had many hundreds, if not thousands of people who have accessed the, uh, the live stream or accessed the recordings at a later date. And to the extent that I think one of the meetings I looked at there were over 800 people who had watched that meeting um, at some point, either the whole meeting or parts of it. The live stream is something that makes these meetings accessible to the residents of Pendle. Now, I don't know how many people there are up in the public gallery. I can see that there's one or two on this floor. About 10. About 10. So, by live streaming, we are allowing hundreds more people to access our meetings than <coughs> is currently the case with people coming in person. Now, the Conservative group on this council clearly made a decision following uh, their taking on the administration in May that they wouldn't live stream any more meetings. I don't know why that decision is taken. There's been no justification for that decision. But after the annual meeting, which was live streamed, um, there has been none from Pendle Council officially. And tonight's meeting is being live streamed courtesy of Councillor Tom Whip with some of my equipment um, and at the cost of a £20 pay-as-you-go uh, SIM card. So it's not impossible. Um, the stream tonight is a bit limited because 
We don't have a, an operator on the camera. Uh, Councillor Tom Witt, who operated the camera at the last policy and resources committee, sat in the body of the meeting and participating in the meeting. Um, nevertheless, and I trust and I touch wood, uh, that it is being streamed as we speak, or with slight digital delay, and that uh, there are people out there who are able to see and hear what we are doing. The limitations of doing it in this way is that it's a fixed camera and it is looking in one direction. Unfortunately, Mr Mayor, it's unable to turn around on its own and focus on you. Um, that is a shame. Well, I, I agree that that is a shame. I think it would be really helpful if we could do that. But it's not absolutely essential and uh, there are ways and means of doing it. The fact is, Councillor Tomwick is demonstrating that it is perfectly possible to live stream meetings. It doesn't cost a fortune. It isn't an administrative burden. And it is something that in the modern, present day democracy is actually uh, taken as the norm rather than something that is extraordinary. I will just remind yourself, Mr Mayor, and your Conservative colleagues, that it was actually Conservative councillors a few years ago who first raised this uh, when it suited them to raise it. And now you're wanting to bury yes. council meetings in obfuscation and obscurity. And it's time, Mr Mayor, that they were remained open, that you pass this resolution and that we get on with official live stream of meetings starting as from the next cycle. Thank you. Can I just add, um, <coughs> sir, <coughs> at this moment in time, um, if we are going to video these meetings, then it should be they have the top quality, the top sound. Um, I've not seen, uh, you know, Tom, it's not 100%. Not if we are going to film these meetings, uh, the cost will be phenomenal. And uh, I, would, I would be on television. So uh, if you want to do it, you should do it right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, yes, I'll second that. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and then Councillor. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as, as far as I am aware, this council is still committed to be open and transparent. Mr. Mayor, uh, you yourself have said there are 10 people in the gallery. Well, 800 people is 80 times the amount of people that we are opening up local democracy to. Now, I don't think I need to remind councillors here tonight that um, what we are doing here is for the benefit of the public and they should be able to um, you know, watch what we are doing, to be able to scrutinise, um, and to be able to make their voices heard if we make a bad decision. Mr May, if we bury our meetings, don't open them up to more people in a more accessible way, I'd love to see how you get a wheelchair and Mr Gallup. Um, Mr May, we are failing the people that we represent. Thank you. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'm riding to speak because I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed that none of the Conservative members have stuck their hand up to speak and maybe they've been instructed by somebody sat in the gallery that they shouldn't speak on this and simply vote against it. But the points made by Councillor David Whip are, are quite valid because when the Covid uh, pandemic started we restricted, we ourselves were meeting virtually and people could see our meetings and hear our meetings and see what councillors were actually doing. Yet the administration from May, after the annual council meeting, are trying to hide behind the cloak of, and you've said it yourself, <coughs> Mr Mayor, that it would cost an arm and a leg. Well, clearly it's been demonstrated that £20 is not an arm and a leg, as Councillor Tom Whip has, has done, and he's, he's filmed some of the other meetings that have happened since May, and I'm quite impressed with the quality that has happened for the sake of £20. So if the Conservative group, through yourself, Mr Mayor, are trying to hide behind it's going to cost an arm and a leg, then you need to be upfront and say that and give us the costings because I'm aware when full council was, was done uh, in May, it didn't cost an arm and a leg. I'm aware and I'm sure you were aware, Mr Mayor, as is the leader, what the cost was. And it wasn't thousands. We were talking hundreds of pounds for a full council meeting. And just to try and help Conservative colleagues who may want to participate and may wish to support this, and 
clearly you may want to become famous and become on telly, Mr Mayor. Can I ask that we have a named vote on this? And then let's see what Conservative colleagues want to do then. Thank you. Can I just correct you, uh, sir? Um, you said the Conservatives haven't put their hand up. I am a Conservative. I have spoken. With respect to you're the Mayor, Mr Mayor, you're not a politician, sir. Right, uh, there is an amendment. No, you uh, can I rise to support the name vote, Mr Mayor? of uh, clarification please. You can. Is this actually an amendment and through you can I ask the, the interim chief executive in, wi in which way is it actually amending <laughs> the original motion? <laughs> so Mr Mayor, uh, unless, I've, I've, I know I've been on this council a while but an amendment, order, is, an amendment is usually an amendment to the motion, not rewriting history again. So Mr Mayor, if, if the Constitution allows you to make a ruling, can I ask that you take on board what the Interim Chief Executive has just said, that in effect the slate's been wiped clean and replaced with this? That's not an amendment, Mr Mayor. I'm asking you in your position as the Mayor, not as a Conservative yeah. Councillor. I shall see you pass. <laughs> We're going to take the amendment. Thank you. Mr Mayor, I'll second you are not speaking to the man. Are you going to move the Mr. Mayor, I move the amendment. I shall also read it as well. Yes, please. The amendment reads that this council recognises the importance of recording council meetings in the wake of the Liberal, Liberal Democrats' attempt to deceive the public following a recent Cold Town Council meeting. The video record of the meeting meant that the public were able to spot the deception and properly hold them to account. Council also announced the pressure on costs and resources in the budget. This council therefore resolves to, number one, investigate the costs of establishing proper facilities in Nelson Town Hall and other venues to deliver live streaming of meetings with each member being able to be clearly heard on video. Point two, better advertise the fact that members of the public can attend and record meetings in person and publish widely when meetings are being held. And number three, present a report on implementing the above to the Policy and Resources Committee. Mr Mayor, we've heard today um, a point there from Councillor Ridbar that the public can see what they are doing. Well, last week at Palm Town Council, the public did see exactly what the Liberal Democrat politicians <coughs> were doing with their eyes in deception. I think in principle, visibility and accountability is a great thing, but as we are uh, amending the motion here, it needs investigating fully as to what that costs uh, and the limitations of whether it's for the full council or the committees and subcommittees or not. <coughs> Mr Mayor, we heard that a record of 800 people have seen uh, the record highest videos on YouTube. Well, 2,000 people saw a Hong Town Council meeting last week where lies were told, not only in the meeting, but then went on to be published 
on social media on the official Liberal Democrat Facebook page. Blatant lies, full accountability to the face of the public. So I'm very happy to move this motion. As I fully support this motion, um, according to the 1960 Public Bodies Act access to meetings, public, public, public meetings are exactly that. They're a public meeting, people should have access to this. And I, I, I think we should investigate for it and bring this one. Thank you. I'm bringing uh, Councillor Boris Lord. Thank you, started speaking and referred to the meeting at Corn Town Council, which, as Councillor Dorothy Lord has said, was live streamed. I actually started to read what his amendment was and then realised it's not actually his amendment, it's somebody else that's written it for him, because what he's saying to what he's written are two totally different things. He, he refers to a meeting at Corn Town Council, and unless he was uh, video filming it, I assume the Corn Town Council or somebody was uh, live streaming it, which gives him the opportunity to make an attack on, on another political party which further strengthens the point of the original motion, Mr Mayor, that meetings should be live-streamed. Yet what does um, Councillor McLadry's proxy amendment do? Actually says that it recognises the importance of recording meetings, but then goes to kick the can down the road. If he's actually got any balls, Mr Mayor, he'll withdraw his amendment that's been written for him and support the original motion. As for Councillor Suckliffe's point referring to the 1960 Act, many of us weren't born in 1960 in this room, and in, in case he's forgotten, the world's moved on now. It's 2021 where technology serves better than 1960. So I would urge Councillor McLadry not to serve the, the master sat upstairs, but actually withdraw his amendment and support the original motion because he's just talked himself in terms of supporting the original motion. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor yes. McLadry, I want to go back on that. Yes. I don't think it's a case of kicking it down the road. I think this is a case of investigating the pros and cons of live streaming, looking at and investigating the cost implications. It's not necessarily just the financial implications in terms of how much it's going to cost uh, to, for someone to operate the recording and the cameras. It's a case of the time and effort of our staff to be involved in running this system, we have the capacity to do it. All these things need to be considered before we rush in and make what's in. And I think there is a sensible amendment in terms of having a, a detailed report and a further discussion on this matter. I must admit I was one of them councillors who was totally against it. Uh, and Councillor Whitney, if I was there, I think uh, the government's working group. Uh, but I am open to further discussions on this issue, but I do feel that it needs to be considered in more depth before we make a decision. And let's be clear, we as a council have got a proud record of being open and transparent in terms of involving members of the public. We've got public question time, regularly we have members of the public attending meetings and speaking on items which are of interest to them. And they are open and quite free to do so. So I don't think it's a case of people trying to hide behind anything or all these ideas and conspiracy theories that what what we've got to hide, there's absolutely nothing to hide. And all the same let's have a moment to the report and discussion. Mr Mayor, can I give notice of a further amendment if this passes <coughs> or fails? So I'm going to bring in uh, Councillor Midland. 
Nothing whatsoever. Any post that there has been was on an unofficial page which is not operated by the Liberal Democrat Party in Pendle. Um, uh, it was done without any authorisation. Um, it has my imprint on it, which anybody can set a website up and put, put into the published by David Whip. It doesn't mean to say that I had anything whatsoever to do with it, and I did have any, nothing whatsoever to do with it. So I would hope that you would withdraw your scurrilous lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope you would withdraw because it is completely and utterly unfounded. And I can prove it. So look, we can deal with this now, or we can deal with it outside the council chamber, um, and we'll take you uh, to, to court if need be. Mr. Mayor, um, Council Andre says it needs investigating what it costs. Well, what it costs by not doing it is open and transparent democracy. And I'm sorry, but it sounds like the Conservatives know the price of everything and the value of nothing. That's the attitude that we've got. And quite frankly, they're just trying to hide what they're up to yes. on Pendle Council. Yes. And Councillor McGrandy says, well, I can honestly say it. Well, the proposal that is put tonight, the amendment that is put tonight, they'll force it through because we've got a majority. Um, it, it begins with a lie. It begins with a lie that the Liberal Democrats on Contact Council took an action which they did not do. They have not cancelled the Cold Blues right. Festival. I rest my case. Thank you very much. Um, Councilman Inval, do you still want to go in with the name of the I've yes. done the original motion. I don't want a main vote on the amendment. No, I mean on the original. No, the original motion is well, part two. I've just seen the last Councillor Whitberg, my comments that I made earlier uh, were from advice I've been given. So I need to make it up with the advice I was given uh, and what it would cost something. So um, my comments were on advice I was given. Thank you very much. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, if Councillor Whitberg has withdrawn his request for a name vote, um, I will um, request a name vote because this is, this is substituting the original motion. It, it, it negates the original motion and replaces it. We don't get to vote on the original motion at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got a medal in tech house with that. Well, there needs to be someone else there. Need to support that. Need to support that. I'll support that, isn't it? Okay. But if the change also on the amendment as moved by Council Madhuri.
16 for, 12 against, and one abstention. So, so Mr. Mayor, can I, can I present my amendment then? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Instead of uh, wiping the slate clean, I am simply going to move the <coughs> amendment. But this council recognises the importance of live streaming council meetings. Full stop. This council therefore resolves to better advertise the fact that members of the public can attend and record meetings in person and publish widely when meetings are being held. And number two, present, and present spelled correctly, uh, oh sorry, instructs the officers to present a report on live streaming to the next Policy and Resources Committee meeting. <coughs> and the reason that I move that, Mr Mayor, is that if the Conservatives really are serious, let's see them back this further amendment then. Mr Mayor, uh, can I second that? The amendment is presented by Councillor Iqbal. Uh, as well as uh, correcting the, uh, the spelling mistake, uh, because for members of the public watching this on the live stream, uh, uh, pre present is spelled P R E C E N T uh, in the amendment. I, I was going to point out, and I wanted to see that actually included in the council minutes with the spelling mistake, but you know, let's correct it. Um, you know, Right, you serious? Vote for this amendment. <laughs> Come on, Peter. You know it's right. I believe uh, the amendment diminishes responsibility. I support the uh, original amendment. Diminishes responsibility. Responsibility. Right, a little bit of a uh, order, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll support this amendment. Um, I think it's, it still maintains <coughs> the essence of this and what the council should be doing. And it removes all the pettiness. It removes the blatant spelling mistake. Um, and I'm not sure what responsibility is being diminished for accountability, I'm sorry, but this. There's nothing wrong with what this is. Could you please, uh, for you, Mr. Mayor, could, could the council please clarify what he meant by that? He's confused. He doesn't need to uh, cancel it. So, 20 votes in a vote. Can I ask for a name vote on this as well, Mr. Mayor? You can ask. Second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Quiet, please. Notice the further amendment, Mr. Mayor. 18 for, 11 against.
Uh, in that case, I will withdraw my amendment. We need to vote on the, the amendment for the substantive motion. Okay. So, just all in favour? That's fine. Those against? So do, do I need to move a further amendment then? Well, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> this morning, this morning, it's, it's both caps on out, so leave it as it is. Yeah, so Mr. Mayor, can I then move something again? Please. Uh, well, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just, just one moment. Mr. Mayor, just uh, clarify that. As I understand it, the current policy of the council, as established in 2019, is for the live streaming of council meetings. Um, that policy has not been negated this evening. Therefore, if we leave this issue and move on to the next order of business, the policy of the council remains to live stream these meetings. Um, it would be entirely appropriate for Policy and Resources Committee uh, at its next meeting to consider how that should be done. Um, it would seem to me that is a, a practical, pragmatic way through the impasse that we currently have. I am happy to concur with what Councillor David Whip has just said. So I'll just seek advice from uh, <coughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to leave it as it is. Okay. We'll have a report at PNR. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank Mr Mayor, I'm very happy um, that we can bring this um, to this council tonight. It's, it's been a long-standing campaign with myself and colleagues to get that full fibre um, out into the rest of Pendle. Um, and what Open Reach have announced is a victory for that campaign. Um, and also a great benefit to the people of Pendle who up until now have been on the wrong side of the digital divide and we'll see the enormous benefits um, that this will bring to their, <coughs> their lives. Uh, Mr Mayor, I move as it's written on the pink sheet, um, and in doing so, would like to remind the Council that Colm is not, sad, sadly, is not a part of the, um, the announcement by um, Open Reach, and um, our uh, motions, what I still stands, that um, we should be Professional and reach to roll the tabs everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further comments on? Thank you. Just to come in there. Just to come in there. I'll say to now, Mr. Mayor, and um, just to say that we do need a big push for this in Colm. It's happened in other parts thanks to uh, councillors uh, Whip and Whip. And uh, we, we, we certainly do need some movement on this for the, the Colin and the rest of the borough. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'm all for, in, you know, for technology, but uh, the Open Reach came into the valley, hopefully, it came down our way. I do hope Colin will not have the trouble like I do. A £200 bill, because they put a, a wrong line to somebody else's. They cut the uh, telephone line down wrongly, but I do uh, support everything what Tom's doing and uh, I wish him all the best and let's hope Tom can go forward. Thank you, but I do hope that all the rich people in my body didn't get on up with. Thank you. Councillor David. 
thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I sympathise with Councillor Purcell's um, uh, uh, cut telephone lines. Um, could I just uh, expand a bit on uh, Open Reach's activities in Barnoldswick? Because uh, uh, Open Reach have carried out, uh, or are carrying out, uh, private to the premises in Barnoldswick. And it's been uh, something of a training ground uh, for their staff, where you've had a, a huge number of students <coughs> who uh, are learning how to install the fibre, and they've used Barnes Week as uh, a, a training ground, as I've said. They've brought the staff, uh, the staff there. So instead of having handfuls of people, uh, we've had hordes of people uh, from Open Reach, together with hordes of vans, which uh, uh, sometimes you'd see 10 Open Reach vans in a line uh, and uh, working in an area. The rollout in Van Oldswick is almost complete. Unfortunately, they've yet to get to, uh, to our part of Van Oldswick. I don't know why they've left us till last, but uh, nevertheless, uh, they are going to get there. And this is going to be a huge boost. Now, it's some months ago now that we discussed a motion here in the council chamber. Uh, there was agreement to lobby Open Reef to extend their activities. Uh, Councillor Tom Whit and myself sub subsequently met with senior people from Open Reach, um, and it is absolutely delightful that the rollout is now extending to Erby uh, and to Nelson and to the uh, Pendleside villages, uh, Fence and Higham, where Councillor Newman uh, has been lobbying actively as well. And yet, one of the areas that we were highlighting as needing to be uh, included Fallbridge, Trogan, uh, Lancer Bridge, uh, are still the wrong side of what Councillor Tom would call the digital divide. And I appreciate that the urban part of Tom has Virgin Media and they've already got the fibre <coughs> to the premises, those sorts of speaks. Uh, that is not the case for the rural periphery of Tom, and it's absolutely crucial that we keep up the pressure on uh, open reach to get fibre to the premises uh, through to those rural properties and get 100% uh, of Pendle covered by these uh, ultra fast networks, which will allow much greater uh, uh, capability for people to operate the businesses from home, to work from <coughs> home, to study from home, uh, and to enjoy life. Just to say that actually, although I don't do my casework in public, um, a lot of work has been going on behind the scenes, and our MP has been uh, in extensive communication with Open Reach. They are fully aware of the situation in uh, beautiful Bullsworth, and I believe that shortly there will be work towards making. Um, as having the same advantages of other parts of the borough. So I hope that people will support this motion, but work is already being done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Whip referred to um, a training exercise by students, was it, Councillor Whip? It looks like a similar training exercise happened in Nelson in trying to destroy the, the streetscape by planting 20 foot high uh, poles absolutely everywhere and anywhere. So whilst I'm happy to support the motion, and this is uh, in, uh, you know, very good news for the areas concerned, uh, hopefully we won't be planting poles in front of people's uh, bedroom windows and living room windows. I don't know if colleagues saw the recent email from Neil Watson, basically stating that nothing can be done now, these poles are there to stay, uh, which is absolutely shocking, Mr Mayor, given the, the current climate of technology, we're still reverting to how to put up posts in front of people's bedrooms. So whilst I'm happy to take on this motion and support the motion, uh, I think it's absolutely disgusting, uh, 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 Mr Mayor, that the government is allowed to simply let poles uh, disturb pe people's, uh, com the comfort of people's own homes, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Any more speakers? No. Chairman, you've got the lead of the council. Just very briefly, uh, absolutely uh, happy with this motion. I think we'll benefit 
fellow residents, so more than happy to support it. Thank you. Any more speakers? Okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could I uh, um, just say that Open Reach, um, well, that's, they, they're not to do with the, uh, the, the, the 6GI infrastructure. And um, they have assured us that they use existing infrastructure where possible. And um, I mean, the, the, the practice of providing new infrastructure is, is generally very acceptable. Um, Mr. Mayor, um, I know uh, Councillor Sarah Gordon Bryce's comments about uh, her, uh, our MP Andrew Stevenson lobbying behind the scenes. Um, and I find it amusing that Bullsworth, beautiful Bullsworth, is last in line. Um, and I, hope, I do really hope that that will come to fruition for you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Any more speakers? Okay, thank you. So all those in favour of the motion? <coughs> okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go on to uh, drivers. Um, uh, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the council <coughs> notes the impact of the shortage of road drivers on council service and its impacts on living here. Especially the street cleaning and the refuge connection. The council resolved that a report on this issue is presented to the next policy and resource committee. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I will, I will second that. Um, I think it is crucial that we um, find a solution to this. Um, I know that the council is struggling to find not just HGV drivers, which has been in the news recently, but all drivers, even Class 3, um, which is impacting the service that this council provides. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, it is crucial that we get to the bottom of this. Uh, we need to look seriously at providing better working conditions, better pay, and to, um, to, to bring those past three drivers back into the council and um, make sure that our services keep going. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, I agree. I have several friends that are uh, HMV drivers and the conditions that they are. Um, Throughout the pandemic, it was horrendous. They couldn't use the uh, facilities, the toilet facilities, in the motorway station. It was horrendous. So, and there were really conditions for these uh, um, wonderful people that kept us going through the pandemic. Uh, to the Thank you very much. Just one more thing. And, um, uh, the tankers that are running around in the UK, you can't, I am an HCV driver myself, and I am a tanker driver myself. You need a special license to carry fuel. Mm. Uh, a lot of people can't get onto these courses to get the uh, AHT license. And it's very difficult and it's very hard to get out. I haven't told thank you for a long time, but I keep my license up to date. So uh, just to let people know, it's not just the HCV drivers, it's the specialist drivers that drive the tanks. Thank you. Now we want to throw it in the uh, Mr. Mayor, so I think we go on My apologies, I just, I just want to get you on. Okay, I'm going to vote on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Now we're going to move on. Mr. Mayor, um, unfortunately, Councillor Adams, who was uh, moving this resolution, uh, it, it is, uh, isn't well. Um, uh, I mentioned to one or two colleagues earlier on that she's got cold like symptoms um, and I said well please don't come um, uh, but she did want very much to, to move this because uh, she was uh, ooh, uh, stunned by the impact that the rainfall had uh, in Bonnet on the 9th of September so the motion reads that council notes the significant flooding in Bernalswick during the intense rainfall on the evening of 9th of September, which has affected many properties throughout the town. Council thanks the manager and staff of the environmental services team for quickly responding and delivering sandbags for affected residents and businesses. 
Given the magnitude of the flooding event, with water pouring into scores of homes and businesses across the town, Council believes grants for property level protection should be available for those affected. Um, that the, the, the Secretary of State is requested to make such grants available and that the Member of Parliament, Andrew Stevenson, be asked to help secure such assistance. And that, following consideration by the West Craven Committee, which is on next week's agenda, the Policy and Resources Committee consider a report on the flooding with a view to identifying any action that can be taken to, the re to reduce the risk of further flooding in future. So that's the, the proposal, Mr Mayor. Um, <coughs> Councillor Tom Whip, uh, who was on the ground and, and dealing with uh, flooding uh, incidents, on the night can tell you better about what was happening. Uh, I, I was coordinating events and getting David Walker involved when we ran out of standards. But there were um, a huge number of properties in the town centre, business properties that were affected, that were flooded, and they still got sandbags outside the doors. Uh, there were several uh, uh, venues pubs and clubs which had to close because they were flooded and, and some of them had to close for um, an extended period of time. Others were able to clean up and get back in action quite quickly. And then there were lots of residents who were affected as well. Now in the past, if there's been a major flood that's affected thousands of people across the country, we have a, a named storm, then the government steps in uh, gives uh, property level grants, uh, up to £5,000, for people to uh, harden the property against the effects of flooding. And uh, that has happened several times, but it's only like when it hits the headlines, it's only when it, it's big news, and, and you know, South Yorkshire, it's on the TV, and stuff like that. And I've always taken the view that if you flood it, you flood it. And it doesn't matter if it's one household, one business, or a hundred households and a hundred businesses. To the person flooded, it's the same impact. They've had a flood, they need to get, uh, get through it, and they need to protect <coughs> the property. So I've always argued that the government ought to uh, grant a property level protection where properties are being affected in this way. And more recently, we've had the example where if there were more than 25 properties flooded, then uh, the government will make those grants available. But it's not automatic, and it's something that we really do need uh, to press for. But in the meantime, we have over 25 properties, <coughs> well over 25 properties that were flooded in Barnsley in the 90s on the 9th of September, and each and every one of them deserves help and support in protecting the property from future flooding incidents. Now, it was so localised on the 9th that people, I was checking with people in Eby, people in Salford, people in Calbrook, and they said, well, we've hardly had any rain here. It was very much concentrated, but it was like rivers running through the streets. Um, you would not believe, if you haven't seen them, the videos that people took and the impact that those floods had. We, as a council, need to do everything we can to help those people and protect them from future flooding incidents in future. I move. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor David Whip said it was light rivers running down the streets. Uh, Mr Mayor, I would describe those streets as rivers during that event. Um, I was out and about during the time, um, I was checking all the, the normal uh, trouble spots for flooding to make sure people were alright, I had a pump in the back of the car ready to go. Um, and it was very unfortunate that we ran out of sandbags um, so quickly when it first happened. Because um, the town council usually restocks that container, and it had been restocked recently as well. Um, but all of our stock gone within minutes. 
Um, and it was very, very thankful that Pendle Council was able to bring all of an extra stuff of standby so quickly. Um, Mr Mayor, the um, requirement from government to supply these grants previously has been 25 properties within the borough. Um, I think this is a stupid target. Again, if you're flooded, you're flooded. And it shouldn't matter if there's 24 or 25 properties. Um, but nevertheless, there is way more than that. And they deserve the help that they are, in, in my opinion, entitled to. Um, Mr Mayor, I second this motion. Um, I hope it has unilateral support. And that... Uh, there's no amendments to it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Unfortunately, there is an amendment. Why? Pardon? Sorry. Two This was a hand. That's that, right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll 
want to bring out gas and business and renewable energy uh, spoken by Papa Tom. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, my hope is there, and um, I was lost where we were on the picture then. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, to, to help you get on, yeah, I'll just move what's on the picture. I'm not need to get on. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure we're, all, um, we're all we're all agreeable that uh, local energy supply is important, especially given the, the recent news, the huge increase in uh, wholesale electric prices. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the pink sheet reads, it acknowledges the effort that this council has made to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from renewable energy, but it further recognises that large financial tests and running costs involved in selling, selling local generating renewable electricity to local customers results in being impossible. Uh, this uh, um, it notes the uh, Parliamentary Environmental Audit Committee, as a result of its 2021 technological innovation and climate change inquiry, Recommended that the right to local supply and local energy suppliers be established to address this. Mr. Mayor, in essence, it supports that, and um, I'm. Um, no, I'll second. Mr. Mayor, I'll second that. Thank you very much. There is an amendment. Yeah, 
sometimes just taking out two to five and putting a new two in. Yes. So it's not an addendum, it's a replacement to it. Look, what, what I'm offering is um, instead of amending it, I'll amend my original motion to, with, with, to include the sense. second paragraph. Maybe that's it. And then hopefully, uh, Councillor Sarah Corbyn Price may retract this and we can happily go home. Well, essentially, I feel that if we have your two instead of my two, or my two is added as well as your two, then we're sort of preempting what my two could potentially come up with. Um, and what this officer would be looking into depending. So I'm afraid I don't support it. Okay. In which case, Mr Mayor, I will uh, rise to speak. Um, um, I regret very much the position being taken by Conservatives here in Pendle, because Conservatives elsewhere in the country, both at parliamentary and local level, are supporting resolutions uh, that are, well, exactly the same as this. This is a resolution that has been circulated by the promoters of the bill and it is being supported by councils up and down the country. This isn't about the detail of how local renewable energy is generated, it's about getting the legislation to allow such renewable energy suppliers, small and local, to be able to feed their electric into the national grid. And that's crucial if this country is going to promote the sort of small scale renewable energy that is vital to addressing the climate crisis. I mean, it's only a small part of the issue and it's only a small part of addressing the problem. But getting the legislation in place to allow that to happen is pretty crucial. And I'm just gobsmacked, to be honest, that here we have a Conservative group that isn't willing to embrace that. I mean, here in Pendle, we've got lots of streams, we've got lots of becks, we've got lots of opportunity for micro-hydroelectric micro supplies. We've got um, uh, the potential for using, perhaps, the, the power of the water flowing through the locks on the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. There is such a proliferation of small-scale schemes, and, and I mean, Councillor Tom, if you want to uh, sound his own trumpet on this, uh, he's looking at micro-generation in one of the Barnswick parks, uh, where we've got a head of water, and uh, he's well on the, the way to, to actually join up a proposal that, that uh, uh, could provide a sustainable uh, power generation solution. But without the ability to feed those amounts of electric into the grid, it all comes to naught because we can generate the power. What did we then do with it? Uh, put it in batteries, carry the battery to somewhere, and then plug it into power from the top? I, I don't know. Um, we could perhaps um, uh, power some LED lights or you know street lights or something like that within the park. But uh, well, we don't need them during the day. And what do we do with the power during the day? So this is all about enabling legislation that will allow power so generated to be used. Fully in support of presenting a report uh, to the Climate Emergency Working Group. Um, you know that would that would be great. But um, it, you know it's not enough on its own. Without the the law being changed. We're all sort of talking uh, to no good effect. Uh, the other thing I'll just mention is Councillor Sarah Coleman Price has talked about the officer that Pendle Council is then pointing. Um, can I just point out to the benefit of the council who may not be aware that um, that officer is being paid for out of the £100,000 
that the previous administration uh, put in for investing directly in climate emergency initiatives, not for paying staff. Sure. And the mealy mouthed Conservatives at Policy and Resources refused, refused to pay for that person out of revenue and instead a robbing capital that should be actually invested in small scale renewable schemes, which is the sort of thing that this legislation seeks to enable. So I'm sorry, but you've blotted your copybook twice. Once by going against the legislation, and secondly, by stuffing £25,000 into an officer of course, instead of investing it in proper facilities. Let's calm down, let's not raise our voices. Mr. Mayor, just taking on board what you just said, let me be the voice of reason then. Uh, I can't see the difference in terms of the amendments point number two becoming point number six on the original motion because uh, what the amendment is saying is that we're giving a task to the new officer whenever they're appointed to bring a report in December. But rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, what's stated in the original motion, I think what Council Coburn Crisis number two is saying will complement what is stated on the pink sheet. So I would urge her to reconsider and just add her point two to become point six, and everybody's happy then. You can go and drive a tanker. Here, here. Mm -hmm. Just merely from my research, there doesn't appear to be a clear consensus on all the mind boggling complexity of recharging. Balancing. It is an incredibly complicated thing, and it could be that next year it is all clear. But at the moment it isn't clear, and that's why I don't support that second section. I don't wish to replay policy resources for all the councillors that aren't attenders of policy resources. Mm -hmm. But essentially, all the officers nodded at me when I asked the question of policy resources is this new officer, it's a big part of their job is applying for green energy and green grants for this council. So therefore, in essence, they are slated to bring in more money than we are spending on their salary. And there was nodding, and I pointed out that nodding and general happiness from the officers at the time. So in fact, spending the money from the climate emergency working group on this officer's salary should in fact bring greater revenue to do more good things for green projects for concrete <coughs> um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Colton Price, um, surely that officer would bring in that same grant funding if it was paid for out of the general revenue for a staff member. And we have an extra £25,000 capital to go towards that grant funding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a yeah. uh, nonsense argument, I'm sorry. Nonsense. I have nonsense. to call it what it is. Um, and you finish that? I think the um, offending paragraph um, is paragraph two. Um, let, let me read it out, please. This um, order, please. Thank you. Um, further recognises that very large financial sets and running costs involved in selling locally generated renewable electricity to local customers, resulting in being impossible for local renewable electricity generators to do so. That making these financial costs proportionate to the scale of the renewable electricity suppliers' operation would create significant opportunities for local companies, community groups and councils to be provided with locally generated renewables, electricity, directly to local people. Businesses and organisations, if they wish, and that revenues received by such local companies, community groups of all councils <coughs> that choose to become local renewable electricity suppliers, uh, sorry, providers, uh, could be used to help improve the local economy, local services and facilities, and to reduce local greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm. Mr Mayor, I don't see why this can't be 
with this um, paragraph two in the amendment. Um, I think it's entirely reasonable. It has cross-party support across the Houses of Parliament. And just because there's a bit of technicalities to work out doesn't mean we shouldn't be supporting this. This has clear benefit for the borough and we should be at every opportunity supporting this bill. Mr Mayor, I think if we, um, if we went with this amendment and only this amendment, we're taking the wind out of our sail. Um, these things, um, though they move slowly in, in the House of Parliament sometimes, um, you do need to haste them up and councils like ours and the ones all across the country who are pledged their support for this bill and say it's a good idea like this is doing here, provide that urgency and provide the wind in the sail to get these things to pass. Mr Mayor, if we only vote for this amendment tonight, I think um, we're doing a disservice to people who would would otherwise benefit, and it would be uh, a very unwise choice indeed. Thank you, Mr Mayor. All those in favour of the amendment? Councillor Palmer. Second, sorry, 
Miss Mayor, I will second that. Thank you. I am informed, I haven't read the bill, but I am informed that there are problems and concerns about it, and therefore, while these are being resolved, I would not want this council to get entangled in national politics and keep it going. <coughs> do I have a right to reply? Yes, you do. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, did you say, Councillor Corbyn Price, that you haven't read the bill, just being informed there are problems with it? Um, I'm sure the uh, 264 MPs, which come from all political groups, um, have read this bill, as <laughs> that is their job to read uh, legislation and bills coming in. And um, they've pledged their support. Um, and you, Councillor Corbyn Price, in moving this, are saying no. This council cannot support this simply because someone has told you there's a couple of problems with it. And you haven't bothered to read the bill and actually check there is. I'm sorry, but that's just utterly ridiculous. Um, Miss Mayor, I've, I've, I've read out in depth there on the pink sheet the benefits of, of this bill. Um, I just, I just urge people that we really should be supporting this. I mean, we as a council declared, declared the climate emergency, and this amendment as it stands won't support the bill at all. In fact, it doesn't even ask the climate emergency working groups to even uh, make a decision on whether the council should support this bill. I mean, I think it should say that, um, but it doesn't. It's just, it's just about, you know. Um, what this council can do for local ages. But that's already talked about in the Climate Emergency Working Group. It's a standing item on the agenda. Mr Mayor, I mean, you know, this just does nothing. It pats itself on the back, which fine, we did that as well. That's a good thing. We should, you know, admit when we're doing things right. Um, I just notes the idea and says, carry on, Climate Working Group, you're doing a good job, <coughs> which to say they are. But it, it doesn't provide that backbone of supporting this bill, which again is so, so important. Mr. Mayor, um, I can't, uh, I, I'm fully in support of, of this motion, and I hope that everyone else is too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Name vote, Mr. Mayor. Second. Yeah. Yeah, second. Yeah. Name vote on the amendment. On the amendment. Yeah. The amendment calls for the Penal Council to support the amendment. If you stay with the amendment, say for, two against, say against, right? If you abstain, say abstain, and this is the amendment to for Council against. Council Armand. Four.
live streaming. Because there's all kinds of things come up in the council. It's not just about what we've talked about tonight. And I have to apologise to the people in the gallery that are here for this, that we've had to wait so long, but that's how it is sometimes. So what they ideally need is some premises to, to keep, you know, all the, the food and the, you know, they give out food bags, um, they, they give out claws, they, you know, anything that anybody needs that is in great need, they, they're there for it. Now I looked at the, uh, well I looked at lots of, lots of um, places, but the one place that I've got my eye on is the Martin Centre, which is lying empty. And I know that's a, an LCC building, Chancellor yeah? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so, county councillors that are here, if they can support this and have a look at what they're actually doing with that building, is it going to be lying empty forever? That place would be ideal. Another thing that they haven't got, that they need, especially the homeless people, is showering facilities. To be able to have a shower, you know, to, for somebody to be on the streets and not be able to go and have a wash anywhere. Um, that, well, the, the, you just go lower and lower and lower into the depths of despair. So, I'd like you all to think about this and if anybody can come up with anything, you know, anywhere that they can do and when we get this out there, um, maybe, hopefully, there'll be somebody out there that might say, well actually I've got a unit that I'm not using, you know, this is what they need, desperately. So, I'd like you to accept and support this motion, I mean. Thank you. Yes, you sir, uh, I would uh, all hold the second, second is of the motion. Um, I, I go on Saturday, sometimes I have a help my friend. This food and the food is uh, given born to a low issue. Uh, I'm going to go into it uh, with the working uh, of their whatever weather. And these people need the help. And I hope that the uh, organisations will help with this situation. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to say I'm, I'm very proud uh, of, of uh, our community and the organisations that um, happen within our community. Um, Everybody looks and everybody sees and everybody has an opinion. But when people um, get up and get off and do things, it, it should be commended. Uh, and it, it's time and effort. Um, we, we, we all do charity things. Uh, so I commend you. And, and two things, I once went to um, uh, uh, something like this in, in Blackburn, to start a look. And I saw people with the uh, Nike uh, trainers on, and um, you know, it, all, all the design away. And I, I, and I said to, to myself, they're not homeless. And now uh, admit that today I donated to this charity. And I, do not, I donated all this design here that I don't fit me anymore. So I, I understand that um, not all you see is what you get. Uh, so I commend it. And I will be visiting you as mayor in the next couple of years. So thank you for your effort on behalf of the council and people who good work. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'd just like to thank my support to the motion. Uh, I think it's a fantastic motion. Uh, there are lots of individuals and organisations across the borough who do absolutely fantastic work, give up their time, uh, give up their own money, uh, a lot of effort that they put into helping those less fortunate. And I think we're lucky to have people like that and the need our help and support and encouragement. Um, we've recognised the individuals who got awarded, uh, and I think that's a positive thing because we'll encourage other people to come forward, and in fact, gives uh, publicity and highlights the good work 
that our residents and individuals are carrying out to our president. Thank you very much. Any more speakers? Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, I'd also like to congratulate the, uh, the, the gentleman on behalf of this initiative. Uh, you're absolutely right, uh, Councillor Arnold. There are a number of organisations, both uh, individual and community groups, who <coughs> do fantastic work across the world. I think given tonight's meeting, we probably deserve an award for, in some parts, the most frustrating uh, council meeting in, 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 in East Lancashire, uh, with the motions going back and forth. So, all things and no further amendments in, in, on this particular one. Uh, that being said, Nelson Town Council has launched uh, the Pride of Nelson Awards, and I've seen some of the categories and some of the nominations which are coming forward. Uh, with some fantastic work being carried out, some organisations there too. So once again, congratulations to uh, Korean Street as well. Thank you. All in favour of the motion? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, this next item is an uh, extraordinary item. I, as mayor, have, have allowed it. Please don't let me down. So the matter of, of the conversation should be called. I'm sorry. The matter of the conversation should be calm and collective. Um, I don't want it to go on to two or three o'clock in the morning. So please don't repeat um, what somebody already said. So we're going to do. Um, uh, the motion has is and an amendment. So we're going to hand them out now. <laughs> Mr. Mecca, yes, you are the test work that's being handed out. Um, I hope that you'll um, the respective motions and amendments are read out for the benefit of anybody that is watching. Um, could you explain what the urgency is um, in that you have accepted it as an urgent item at tonight's meeting? I understand that has to be included in the minutes. Yes, sir, and uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to do so. Uh, uh, I was at the meeting um, um, last week um, with the Braves. Um, I was told that um, we had to make a decision because the preset for the Tom Town Council was in October. So we had to make a decision. Uh, I also have been named the chairman of uh, the Braves Festival in the past. I believe it to be an excellent event and we should keep that my person. The organisation of this event takes 12 months to the day. I have been there a week before the rooms, still organising things. So, is there an urgency? Yes, there is. We need to get things organised and booked in and ordered. So, um, and, and that's why. And also, <coughs> um, as Councillor McCann said, the, the, um, the Facebook page is off the limits. Also, it's a petition of 5,000 people. This is why I brought it. The people need to speak. Hope that answers your question, sir. Where's the amendment, Mr. Potter? It's the amendment, no, it's going round. Mr. Mayor, could, could I ask on which. Um, Exceptional circumstances, this emergency motion is being allowed to be um, put to this council. Well, as I'm aware, it's my own personal, um, whether I do or not, I'm allowed to say. You can't do that. Sorry? You're not allowed to It needs to have exceptional circumstances. The exceptional circumstances that I mean is we need to get this um, sorted one way or the other due to the organisation of it and the time scale of it. Sir. Mr. Mayor, can I just, I'm not challenging your authority, nor would I dream of doing so, but with respect, you are putting forward your personal opinion. You're sat in that chair as the mayor of this borough. I need you to, sat, to explain to me, as an elected member, in your capacity as the mayor. I'm not really interested in your personal capacity. Okay. So, because that has to be recorded in the minutes, and from what I've heard from you over the last few minutes, it's all about your personal opinion. I need to hear from you as the mayor. 
Okay, the mayor accepts that 5,000 people in the in Col and the borough of Pendle have voted to a petition um, to talk about the winds, not to cancel or not to accept it. So I'm voting forward because I'd like this to be um, addressed at this meeting. So with, with respect to you, Mr. Mayor, with respect to you, Mr. Mayor, you're, so are you saying then that if anybody launches a petition that reaches 5,000, that crosses the threshold for an urgent motion, number one? But number two, my understanding is, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, I read in the local press that Corn Town Council, of which I think you are a member as well, have organised a, a, a meeting next week or the week 12th after, October. 12th of October, so... Again, I'm pressing you, Mr. Mayor. No, I, don't, I, mean, I, don't I don't want to press you as the mayor, nor is it my job to, but if, if the threshold is 5,000, are you... There's no that, threshold. So there's no threshold. So if I could organise a petition of 100 people, you're saying that's an urgent debate. Number one, and I'm asking you as, through, as a question, Mr. Mayor, but more importantly, if there's a meeting organised by the people that have been delegated to deal with the Blues Festival on the 12th of October, What's the urgency that you need it dealing with before the 12th, Mr Mayor? And I'm asking you as the Mayor, not as Councillor Neil Butterworth. As the Mayor, not as Councillor Neil Butterworth. The urgency is the organisation. As I've been in the situation where I've had to help organise this, this event, uh, it takes 12 months to the day. The still things going wrong and need to be sorted out to the day. This is a major event. It started off uh, 30 years ago, just as the town municipal home, and then it's gone to an international uh, event. So I am, I've asked, been asked to um, look at this and, and we are. Mr. Mayor, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, can I just come no, back? No, can no, I just no, come no, back, please? Just so, so, Mr. Mayor, in terms of the minutes of the meeting, you have to give a reason for the minutes of the council meeting as to why you're allowing it. So, what are you actually saying to the minutes of the meeting? in terms of what's going to be recorded for the future. Mr Mayor, Mr Mayor uh, a couple of minutes ago you said um, it ha we have to organise this. Yes. What, what has that got to do with this council, for one? Secondly, it's being organised, so why do we need to discuss that here? It's being organised, the chairman at the town council yesterday was in a meeting with the chief executive at Pendle Leisure and somebody else and they were getting on with it. Getting on with organising it. I, I, I'm absolutely gobsmacked that this needs to be discussed here. And there's only me and you on the town council that are in this chamber. It affects the economy of Pendle. Not, yeah, no, not, no, not no, just... I don't, don't try to teach you around to suggest the goodness there. Mr. Mayor, the meeting is on the 12th of October. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you very much for your comments. So, Mr. Mayor, a point of clarification. What are you putting in the minutes is my question to you. Okay, I... Sorry, Mr. Mayor, just one thing, a point of clarification. You're saying there's a public meeting on the 12th, which has been organised by the Cork Town Council. So what, 12 days? What can we do in 12 days? What you're saying, which, what hap which can happen now? Yeah. With regarding organisation, I'm just a bit confused. Yeah. What you're doing best by here, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Mayor, and it's very frustrating, especially for the Town Council. You were actually attended the meeting. You've already started. On Monday, the Pendle Ledger Trust was discussed as well, where I was present. Yeah. The chief exec said she would help you get involved where she can help. So I'm just a bit confused. 12 days, it's going to be a public meeting for them 5,000 people to attend. What's okay. I have made my decision as, as the mayor. And we so, what is, so what is your decision? No part in this discussion. Okay, thank you very much. I think we're just going around in circles here. You're playing politics. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, can I just raise a point of order once again? I've asked you, what are you putting, what are you putting in the minutes for the record? I need an answer from you. The event that we are talking about directly affects the economy of Pendle, not just Con. That is why, that's what I want in the meeting, in the minutes. It affects the all of Pendle, not just Con. Thank you. Please. Yeah. I think... Let's make progress, please. Uh, 
there's a motion which has been accepted by the Mayor. The Mayor has made it absolutely clear the reason for it. Time is of the essence. Uh, it doesn't matter, every, every day counts. Every day counts. And it's such a huge event, it needs a lot of time and effort. And a lot of people have worked hard and we've put lots and lots of money into this event over decades. And we're in a position where that the Blues Festival, as we know it, isn't going to happen. It needs to be addressed by this council because the economic implications across the borough are significant. Businesses and individuals are depending on it. And it's absolutely clear in my mind that we as Pender Council need to have a clear position on the Blues Festival. That's the reason for the urgency. I know the meeting is taking place on the 12th, but before that meeting takes place, this is the opportunity for this council to make it smart and make it clear what the council's position is. So at the public meeting, everyone is clear where we stand. Mr. Mayor, can I just one moment, sir? One moment, madam. 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 Um, I think it's one of those ones, the, the town council voted to stop the blues. No. 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 Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, please, Mayor, please, Mayor, please can the Conservatives stop repeating this line? Right. Um, if you, if, 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 Mr. Mayor, if the, if the motion... Mr. Mayor, 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 Please sit down, sir. I'll bring you in one moment. Yeah. I'm, just going, I'm just going to let uh, the council put his hands up to speak. So, no. Point of order, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Point of point order. Of I am Mr. Mayor, you should take a point of order. You should read the press release, Captain. You should take a point of order, Mr. Mayor. Read the whole press release. And point of order, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Standing orders required that members speak to a motion. You have the floor. At, at the moment, no motion has been proposed. Therefore, uh, apart from a point of order, no one should be speaking apart from yourself. Mm -hmm. If, Mr Mayor, this motion is going to be moved, please can I suggest that it is moved and that it is read out as part of the moving so that everybody uh, can hear and understand what the motion we are speaking to is about. <coughs> yes, sir, I will, I will agree to that. Thank you. Well, I move the motion. I shall read it also. Thank you. Emergency notice of motion regarding the Blues Festival. Iconic Great British Blues, uh, <coughs> Great British Rhythm and Blues Festival has been a staple event in Pendle for over 30 years. Almost every year since its creation, we have seen tens of thousands of people flock to Common Town Centre enjoying the music and helping to boast the local economy. Following the unexpected cancellation of the Blues Festival by, festival by the Liberal Democrat controlled Home Town Council, without consulting the public, the outcry from both the public and local businesses has been massive. A petition was set up almost immediately by a member of the public and within days it has been signed by over 5,000 people. Given the public outcry, the council resolves to Number one, immediately contact Hong Town Council seeking urgent clarification on their intentions for the 2022 Boys Festival. <clears throat> Number two, urgently investigate options for Pendlebury Council to assist the delivery of the Boys Festival in 2022. Number three, work with the public and local businesses to establish a charitable trust which can take on the festival in the coming years, protecting the festival's long term future. Number four, Request Hong Town Council to transfer the copyright of the name of the festival to Pendlebury Council until such a time that the charitable trust can be established and the naming rights to be transferred to them. Number five, request that control of the mailing list and website for the Boys Festival be transferred to the Pendlebury Council until the trust is established. Number six, ask officers to investigate if the Boys Festival 
qualifies for funding from the Government Traditional Loan Restrictions Grant, Nesta Cultural Impact Development Funds, the Arts Council of England National Lottery Projects Grants, Culture Recovery Fund, Emergency Resource Support, Music for All <coughs> in the Community Project Funding and PRS Foundation, Orchid Fund for Organisations and Prepare Applications if the New Blues meets the criteria of these funds and others. And number seven, Mr Mayor, ask officers to investigate if any of the millions of pounds of funding given to the Council from the Government to tackle COVID and aid recovery will be available to help deliver the blues should Penal Council be required to do <coughs> that in Mr Mayor, the press release has given to the Lancashire Telegraph, I quote, this is a very sad day for the lovers of the Blues in Cole and for all those involved in the event. Decided to make the 2019 event the finale of the Great British Ribbon and Blues Festival was an extremely difficult and heart-wrenching one to make. Finale, Mr Mayor. Done, dusted, forgotten about it. I'll move the Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have an amendment. Uh, is he wishing to speak? Yeah, he said he wanted to. I'm so good because I carry on my discussion of earlier. All right. So, we have words like heartbreaking, we have finale, we have those sorts of words. That is what was discussed and resolved. This is an incredibly valuable festival. It's incredibly valuable, not just for Cone itself, all the Cone's businesses, the pubs, the restaurants, the B&Bs, the, the hotels, etc., all of them, and across Pendlebury. It's worth millions of pounds. Cone Town Council knew that when it took on the festival from the Leisure Trust in the past. The Leisure Trust had sort of gone a bit stale in the way it approached it. Cone Town Council took it on because it knew there was value in it, and it wanted to Cure it for the long term. Now we seem to have reached the thing whereby the council resolved to have a summer music festival, <coughs> a day of it, at the August bank holiday weekend, and then a bust of 10,000, magically increased a few minutes later to 20,000 was put forward. Possibly another two days is another token afterthought. It washes away the blues, though, it washes away all the value. As the leader said, about the value has been built up over many, many years with many thousands of people coming to this. A bit more energy, a bit of revisiting is fine. Blues in a new format is fine. It's got to constantly, you know, become changed, become developing. It does need to attract a younger audience. You know, endless different tribute bands or whatever may not be the best way to do it these days. However, it's important. The idea of setting up a charitable trust as well is a brilliant one. You know, why not do that? Why not call on expertise from people who run these sorts of events? I understand the town council is talking to someone that runs this sort of thing. There may be some mileage in that. There may not. The Cone Town Council budget, as obviously published before, always states that there is a £50,000 investment made by the town council. It has a good precept which has been built up to support these kinds of spending initiatives and the town council is prepared to do that. It set that budget and it has allocated that for the future. Suddenly changing it without re reference to the finance committee or even the Blues Working Group either. A little bit strange that one. So suddenly to have a meeting, televised, which exposed this sort of rather random way of doing it, is not the best way to do it. What we're discussing tonight is how Pendle Council can potentially support it. I don't agree with things like just giving them money here and waving this and waving that. Pendle Valley Council has much more significant financial hazards and problems than Cone Town Council has. Cone Town Council took on these little it's just like it took on various parks and playgrounds and the town hall, etc., to be able to secure those for the future. It did that with the Blues as well. And therefore, it's important for that to carry on. Now, a charitable trust will take a while to set up and learn the ropes, and it can then learn from that and take it over if the town council don't want to do it. I mean, if we can certainly, when the Conservatives take control of the town council again in a couple of years' time, then I'm sure we'll bring it and revitalise it again. But if the Liberal Democrat Control Council don't want to do it, then we have to think what to do with it in the short term. 
So, I support the motion. The finances are fine at Cone Town Council to do it. I don't know why they suddenly said, let's just make it up and let's just chop the budget we've already agreed. We haven't even started to consider the budget for the forthcoming financial year anyway. So again, another knee-jerk reaction there. And that's not the way it's going to go. So, I support the motion and second it. Thank you. Councillor Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have an amendment that would delete the existing uh, uh, proposal put forward, um, uh, with the exception of the first paragraph, um, which is to say, the upcoming Great British Freedom of Blues Festival has been a state event in Temple for over 30 years, almost every year since its creation, we've seen tens of thousands of people flock to the Common Town Centre, enjoying the music and helping to boost the local economy. Thereafter, two, Cone Town Council has resolved that the festival should be run on different lines in 2022. That Cone Town Council has budgeted £20,000 towards the cost of the festival. The set up a public meeting to discuss the future of the event, and that, <coughs> together with Pendle Leather Trust, the Town Council has had discussions with a commercial operator willing to take on the promotion of the ticket events at Leather Trust venues at no cost to the Town Council. Accordingly, Council resolved <coughs> one that Pendle Borough Council waive the £9,000 fee for street cleaning primarily undertaken at the Festival Fringe. And two, that Pendle Borough Council provide additional funding to Pendle Leisure Trust for the operation of venues for the festival and underwrite Pendle Leisure Trust if any losses are incurred as a consequence of the ticketed events. And that the future of Cong's Blues Festival and Pendle Council's contribution towards it is further considered at the October meeting of the Policy Resources Committee, which meets in a fortnight's time. Mr Mayor, I find the lies that have been told about this absolutely astonishing. I find it even more incredible that the Conservatives have spread misinformation about uh, the so-called cancellation of the Blues Festival, given that it was under the Conservative leader of this council Councillor Joe Cooney in January 2015 <coughs> that the transfer of the Blues Festival and other uh, facilities, and we talked about those briefly earlier this evening, um, uh, should be considered. And it was Councillor Joe Cooney, under his leadership, yeah. Conservative, that set the train in motion for. Pendle Council to divest itself of the responsibility for the Blues Festival. And then, well, I don't think a lot of these people were around yeah. in, in 2015. Um, and in February 2015, uh, the Leisure Trust <laughs> put forward as one of their savings proposals um, uh, a cut of £50,000. Uh, as a consequence of not holding the Blues Festival. So you can go back and you can check the history books, you can check the minutes of this council, and you can find that that is absolutely correct. Now, Pen uh, sorry, Cong Town Council did not vote to cancel the Blues. What they said was they wanted to hold it in a different way. Councillor McGladdery read out a statement. That statement is not from any Liberal Democrat councillor in Pendle. It is not from any Liberal De Democrat 
councillor on Cong Town Council. Not a word of that has come out of the mouths of any Liberal Democrats. So your proposal here tonight is built on a massive lie. And for party political yes. pursuit, you, the Conservatives, have stirred this up. You have created the Ferrari which uh, has led to you putting this uh, rather disgraceful resolution forward here tonight. And I will point out, Mr Mayor, in my final words, that a few years ago I suggested a bid for Colm and one of my motivations for a, a business improvement district was to help support the Blues Festival. And you can go back in the record and you can find that I've said that a number of times and Councillor Army, Leader of Council, knows full well that I have argued for that. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Sorry. Councillor Ablock, I'm going to second the amendment. Okay. You don't speak as well then. If you want to. Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to second the amendment, but I'm going to pick up in terms of the, the emergency motion that you allowed as the Mayor. And in your allowing, and the minutes will reflect this, you said that events like this take 12 months to organise, and time is of the essence, I'm paraphrasing now, time is of the essence, and it's absolutely essential that this Council makes a decision tonight. That's, that's the way that I understood no, I what, didn't, I didn't understood what, well I'm paraphrasing, I'm not okay. using word for word, but Mr Mayor, if I read the actual motion that's been proposed by Councillor McGladry, <coughs> if you look at items one to seven, the majority of it is to investigate options, is to ask officers to investigate, is to see whether we can get ground funding, is to establish a charitable trust. None of that's going to happen in 11 days time, Mr Mayor. And yet, yourself, you've made quite clear to members of this council that time is of the essence. Now, what the Conservatives have moved here will take months to sort out. You can't set up a charitable trust overnight, unless I'm mistaken. It takes weeks and months. But if I refer back to the, the video that I saw of Cone Town Council meeting, Town Councillor Neil Butterworth there moved an amendment that said, let's defer this particular decision until we've had further discussion. Yet the mayor of this borough, let the mayor of this borough, Mr. Mayor, has told me earlier, after repeated questioning, that time is of the essence. So I'm confused whether the mayor of the borough understood what he was allowing, or whether Town Council Neil Butterworth understood what he was doing at Cone Town Council. But in terms of the actual Blues Festival, Mr. Mayor, if the Conservatives were that concerned, and Councillor David Whip is right, uh, there are some Conservative members, very few of them, who were around in 2015 and they know who they are, who voted under the previous Conservative leadership at that time to offload the Blues Festival to Cone Town Council. And one of the reasons that it was offloaded, Mr Mayor, and you, I think, were on the Council, and Councillor Joe Cooney at the time, and I've checked the record, made it quite clear that the Blues was running at a loss. We couldn't afford to subsidise it, therefore, if Cone Town Council wanted to take it over, they were more than welcome to do it. Yet what, what the Conservative motion tonight is doing is driving a coach and horses through that previous decision because not one of these things, one to seven, can you achieve, and I said not you personally, Mr Mayor, but the Conservative group, can achieve in the next 12 days at a public meeting arranged by the Cone Town Council would have done. I think I'm not going to get involved in terms of who's lying and who's not lying, but Councillor Coleman Price talked about use the word heartbreaking. Those are words that I don't associate with the Conservative Party. Because the fact is, Mr Mayor, this has been made into a political football by Councillor McLarry, whether it's of his own doing or others, uh, that remains to be seen. But the fact is that if the Conservatives were really interested in saving the Blues Festival in one shape or form, the political uh, agreement that all parties on this Council have, and I've been on this Council long enough, is that where things are of a strategic importance to this borough, and you've said that this is, and I agree with you, political parties sit down have a discussion and agree an outcome. The last thing that we do as political parties, and we all, we all argue on a number of things, we blame each other if it's raining outside, but the fact is that your party, Mr Mayor, have made this into a political football, yet not one of these things can your party achieve in the next 12 days. And if you can, I, I hope somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. In terms of the amendment that I've to second, Mr Mayor, 
If the Conservatives are really interested in saving the Blues Festival in its current format, well, you need to grow a pair and actually agree to what the amendment says. Cough up the money to Corn Town Council. Don't dilly dally and say transfer the copyright, transfer this and this, because that ain't going to happen. Corn Town Council, democratically elected, they could turn around at their next meeting and give you the two finger salute if they wanted. Absolutely. What are you going to do then? What's Keith Council Kieran McGlady going to do then? Sit on his hands and think, oh well, I tried, but nothing happened. Why do you not work with the town council over the next 11 days? Come up with a solution. And if that means that you as an administration underwrite the Blues Festival, if you're really interested in saving it, then support the amendment. Because yeah. this isn't worth the paper that you've done, Mr. Thank you very much, Councillor. Thus, of course, it is curious that it hadn't been to uh, Finance and Services or the Blues Committee, but it come for that particular meeting. With regard to the heartbreak and the, the words about the Summer Music Festival, that was the official press release of Hometown Council. So whether, in fact, a Liberal Democrat voted for or didn't, it is their administration, and it would be curious that an official press release shared in the press would not represent their position. Um, I have watched the meeting, and it is very frustrating. I have read the transcript, and it's quite clear that the blues was going to be replaced with something that was for local people in a local place that's going to be cheaper. Um, I have not always been a great supporter of the blues, and I was chairman of the town council when it took it on. And the reason that I wasn't such a massive supporter then wasn't that I didn't support the festival or the huge boost to the economy, but was because at that time we only had two officers and we were a really little council and I thought it would be too much. But that isn't the case now. There were seven officers at Cove Town Council and it is actually in robust financial health with one million and ninety-seven pounds in the bank. So actually is it ninety seven pounds in the bank? Yes, let's not do that. Down. So, so they're not actually, it's the money isn't actually the most enormous problem. If you compare the losses that the Penn and Leisure Trust were making uh, in their last year, and of course it goes up and down dependent on the sort of weather that you're getting. <coughs> but if you compare the losses that they were making, <coughs> Co Town Council, and I was so pleased to see this, I was on the Blues Working Group, I was volunteering at the Blues, they were, they were pushing that down. The so called budget was 50,000. But it was getting less and less. <coughs> and I could see that 30,000 was within the budget and 20,000. And there were really good ideas because the budget, the, the, the blue committee were working with people who have businesses in the town. And they were making suggestions like souvenir glasses and things like that that people <coughs> who don't buy the full price tickets for the movie were prepared to perhaps spend and discretionally buy one. And that would help cut the costs and make the whole thing more sustainable. With regards to the allegation that it was in fact the Conservatives who whipped up some few worry, not at all. Um, in fact, this Facebook group, the people that I just know slightly through the bids, they are, they are people who are citizens in the town, who have businesses in the town. And I didn't think anybody, I certainly didn't, uh, would imagine that this Facebook group would have 7,000 members within days. It is surprising, but I think it shows the deep feelings that people have, and if you go on that Facebook group, you can see that they're not just Conan or people from Pendle, they are blues aficionados who don't want to see the blues, the essential spirit of the blues diluted by the summer music festival that was clearly stated in the papers shared at the meeting. So essentially, this, this um, motion as I see it, is all to do with making sure that Cone Town councillors and other people can go into that meeting on the 12th of October with the clear feeling that Pendle Council supports, in all the ways laid out across the seven points, the actions. And as for speed of charity, I've got news for you. You'll be amazed. There's a special button on the charity's website, and it says, would you like to set up this charity because there's a threat or there's an imminent reason why you need to be fast? And I've done this myself. So yes, no, no, I have, I really have. And I set up a charity, yeah, I really have. On a Sunday night, my husband and I, we, we filled in all the forms on a Sunday night. They rang us on the Tuesday, so the charity mission in the depths of COVID. They rang us on the Tuesday, they said, this is good. I can see that you need to crack on with this. And on the Wednesday, 
we were a charity. So it can be done, it could be done, even before the flood. And then finally, I just want to say that this council transferred the blues to the then conservative Cone Town Council. And our dear departed, beloved ex leader, uh, Joe Pumey, felt that he was handing over the baton to save hands. And little could he have known. Thank you. Trust 
can operate um, without the potential risk and would be able to carry on doing the works. Um, Mr Mayor, it's a very sensible amendment. Um, it makes very clear what steps we could take this meeting urgently, with urgence, that would actually make a difference before this 12-day deadline. Um, Mr Mayor, the original motion does no such thing. It's all long-term. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't think people have thought this amendment. I think it's very sensible. Um, and if not, um, maybe they could propose adding these things in as well as others. Um, I think people in Coleman are very happy for that um, because it, it, they are good suggestions. There we go. And I'd, I'd like to hear people talk against this amendment and give reasons why this council cannot support these actions because I have not heard any yet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, what are you talking about? Yeah, point of order. Mr. Mayor, what are you talking about? 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 Um, he cannot speak now and then speak uh, to in reply. He That's can't right. do both. Let him speak now. Let's hear what he's got to say. So, Councillor McGladry can speak now, but he will not have the right to reply at the end of the debate. Councillor McGladry would like to speak now or the end of the debate? Let him speak now. At the end, okay. I'll speak now. Is there any more, any more speakers? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I cannot hear two people talking at me, so slow down and more people. Point of order, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> Councillor Sarah Corbyn Price is indicating that she wants to speak again on the amendment. Oh. Um, you are allowed to speak twice on an amendment or any motion. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, um, Councillor, you're not allowed to speak. Councillor, that should speak please. Uh, yeah, just, just a point on um, the council that talks about the bid and about how the bid can um, deliver the police vessel. I think it was, was his intonation that in what he was trying to say. The bid cannot do anything that is existing, that runs already by the council. The bid is all about additionality. So it has to do with additional things. It can support the police vessel. It can do anything like it. It can support it. It can run a fun fair. It can sell extra tickets and pledge passes and all these different things. The bid cannot run the Blues Festival if it is run by the council. The idea of putting the Blues Festival into a charitable trust is something that I entirely support. I think it's an incredibly valuable thing for everyone in Pendle, not just in Home, and it must be done. And in terms of cutting the costs, I think it, it's a sensible thing to try and cut any cost that the, the, the Blues Festival has. But looking at costs and budgeting, Colm Town Council budget of £50,000 per year to deliver the Blues Festival. Now, they didn't run it in 2020, they didn't run it in 2021. So in my opinion, and my understanding of that budget, there should be £100,000 sat that, that was ring fenced to deliver the Blues Festival. And by the time we get to 2022, there will be another £50,000. <laughs> now, in the report to Compound Council, it yes. said that the, the cost of delivering the Blues Festival were to increase. And the sums that were put in that report were £75,000. That means that there's enough budget there to run the festival for at least another two years. So why cancel it now? Why not say so? But they were the words that were put forward in the press release. They were the words that were being banned about. I haven't read the transcript, I haven't read the book. No, no, no. But I will do. So, so, as I say, £150,000 for two more, don't look up, two more years of the Lewis Festival. Now, we know when Kong Town Council took over the festival running, I was on the town council at the time, it had lots of different issues and we managed to get the cost of running the festival down and lots of businesses want to support the council in delivering the Blues Festival and get the cost down even further. 
these people have been rebuffed by the council. They weren't allowed to be part of that, that conversation. We had been, and all numerous people have approached the council at the events committee the Blues Festival Working Group and were taken on board. Why? I don't know. But it would be nice if they were properly engaged and I'll call to the meeting on the twelfth. We need proper information from this council about their commitments to the festival going forward so that at the meeting with Contact Council the decision can be made properly and fully informed from the businesses, the Borough Council and the Town Council in all parties. I support the original amendment. Okay, thank you. Just a point of clarification, Mr Mayor. Council Sutcliffe is asking all these questions. Do these questions not relate to Corn Town Council? It's not we're just asking one Corn Town Councillor. That's what the public meeting is there, because obviously all the Corn Town Council will be there to answer the questions. And how many questions? You just ask you to ask about ten different questions. Yeah. About ten yeah. different yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously that's what the public meeting was for, wasn't it? And obviously it's speaking for Corn Town Council. We said Corn Council for them prize and I think David Council is better than then. You know, that that's the reason we asked at the beginning, what was the guest that we have the meeting today? Okay, thank you. Okay, good to go. Sorry, can I ask can I ask for a name to vote on the amendment when you get to that stage, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll support the call for the name vote. Um, just responding to the debate and pointing out that uh, responding to the debate means you can't introduce new issues but to talk about what's been said. Um, and going a little bit backwards, uh, Councillor Sutcliffe referred to the bid. Um, I assume <coughs> Councillor Sutcliffe is a, um, a, a, a owns a business within the business improvement district, uh, and I assume he's paid his levy and uh, the, you know he's speaking from a position of strength in, in terms of uh, that bid and uh, what it does. Um, when I initiated the discussions at Pendle Council about having a bid, um, the intention was for at least in part for the Business Improvement District to contribute to the venues that benefit from the Blues Festival uh, to find a mechanism to contribute to the cost of putting it on. Because uh, there are many, many businesses in Con, uh, the venues, that take a significant proportion of their annual income the Blues Festival and the contribution that they make to the cost of the overall event is uh, insignificant, if I can put it that way. And that is part of the problem, and it has always been part of the problem. The ticketed events do not in themselves make money. Now, the reference in my uh, amendment that was meant from, from the Liberal group and supported by Labour Field is that uh, there is a professional promoter uh, who's interested in taking on the ticketed event at his risk. Um, I actually know the person in question, I have um, um, the uh, activities that he's taken, uh, taken on before, and I have every confidence <coughs> that he will make a success of those ticketed events. There then uh, comes the Leisure Trust, which the Leisure Trust position, and my understanding is that there was a discussion after the board meeting on Monday, but not a board decision uh, on the issue. But the Chief Executive of the Leisure Trust is saying, uh, well, uh, we want uh, underwriting for if there are any losses uh, on the beer sales, effectively. They don't sell enough beer um, to cover their costs. They want that underwriting, and they also want the costs of the technical uh, sound and lighting uh, to be covered uh, by a third party. Um, it would be entirely reasonable for this council to underwrite the Leisure Trust. After all, Pendle Council is the banker of last resort for the Leisure Trust. Um, you know, we look constantly at the uh, amount of money that they require from Pendle Council. So the amendment actually proposes, in addition to the street cleansing, two further things which Pendle Council can decide tonight to help the Blues Festival uh, uh, succeed next year. Um, 
I, I just sincerely hope that the majority of members of the Tenth Council will vote in favour of this. Because the final thing is, we have a discussion of policy and resources, which happened a fortnight tonight in this chamber, two days after the public meeting overnight by Compton Council, when we can look at all the rest of the issues and if there are any other ways that the Federal Council can assist. Um, in the meantime, officers to go away and they can look at whether additional restrictions grant, this grant, that grant, the other grant, can be utilised to support the event. I cannot see what the harm in doing that is. Finally, uh, Mr Mayor, uh, you said it takes 12 months to organise the event. Well, frankly, um, uh, Councillor David Crowe from Price said, quote, a trust will take a lot to set it up. Um, so we've got two statements there from Conservative councillors, uh, which are contradictory. It'll take a long time to organise, and the trust will take a lot to set up. So, you know, I, I, quite honestly, in, in the real world, it's not going to happen, is it? Not in order for the whole month of planning to be put in place uh, that the Mayor referred to. Um, the expertise Councillor David Colvin Price referred to, well, the professional uh, promoter that the Comptown Council have got interested in this uh, is somebody that gives professional expertise in space. And I just urge everybody support the amendment. Let's get forward on this and let's forget the plan. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, you are right to respond, not on the camera. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's just been made up as we go along here, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, if anybody watching this YouTube video, we compare it to the last meeting that we spoke about the RF themselves. Um, Mr. Mayor, the motion looks to secure the Boys Festival for 2022 and hand it over perhaps to a charitable trust going forward. That's what this motion is doing. Seek an urgent clarification for the immediate future of the Blues. How Pendleborough Council can assist in that and the setting up and formation of the charitable trust going forward. Um, how have we got here? Well, we've heard quite a lot of nonsense here, but um, one point is the, the fury and the fury that have been stirred up by the Conservative Council. 5,000 members of the first page are not all Tories. Some of them may be, but independently set up. Read the comments yourself. The meeting that I attended the other day with all Republicans, it wasn't a steam inquiry, it was an independent. In fact, most of them there were socialists. <coughs> um, the opinion there was that this, this, this festival was indeed cancelled. There was a strong desire in Cole within the Boys Festival for the festival to be handed over to the charitable trust, which is what we're aiming to do. And we can ask the question, well, why is that? The honest answer is there is a lack of faith now in Colm, within the voice community, around the future and the ability of the Liberal Democrats to deliver. Which is a question on the integrity. And I will, Scott, I will, I, will, I will now touch on a few points why there is a uh, question of integrity of the Liberal Democrats in that Colm Town Council. Uh, Mr Mayor, Mr Mayor, Councillor Gladry is responding to the debate. I am in responding to the debate, you refer, in responding to the debate, you refer to issues that have come up in the debate. You do not, Mr Mayor, introduce new material. Yes. So that we start on the matter is probably too much. Why? Why is this being so? Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. Everybody, calm down. Mr. Mayor, please carry on. Well, this is in direct response to the accusation that the Tories have stirred this up. The public are outraged because there were seven empty seats in the council. Why weren't the three people who were trying to get into the chamber of all entry with the excuses of the capacity due to COVID? There were seven empty seats that were nominated for councils. Not that were empty. Those three people should have been our actors. <laughs> we have fake social media posts on the Liberal Democrat Facebook. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, point of personal explanation. Mr. Mayor, point of personal explanation. 
And I'll go in the early in the meeting, early in the meeting, I pointed out that that is not an official Facebook page operated by Pendle Liberal Democrats. That remains the case. It remains the case at the beginning of the meeting, it's not at the end of the meeting. Everybody, listen to me. Calm down. Please let him carry on. Thank you. I'm simply explaining why the public is outraged in response to the accusation it was down to the Tories. We've had no, the, the public have had no liberal democratic responses for a whole week, despite all the fury going on. They buried their head in the sands. Decisions have been made outside council meetings. The chairman of the town council, before the debate had begun, we have decided on a summer festival before the council meeting had even started and before the discussion had taken place. This was done behind closed doors, not democratically. There was no reason whatsoever, Mr Mayor, not to defer this item. Given the three people trying to kick the front door down to gain access, and these are three business owners in common. Press release, as I quoted earlier, all wrenching decision to permanently the council the loose. There's a question over the precept, where was the £150,000, which could cover easily two future blues festivals. And uh, Councillor McCall asks, let's sit down and discuss that. How can we, when the item was asked to be deferred, and the decision was made in the absence, which I believe pers purposely perhaps, of some of the key Conservative councils for the meeting. Well, we can't sit down and discuss when the decisions are made behind them. Mr. Mayor, this, this, this motion is to hand over the Blues Festival to the people of Colm. It shouldn't be a political decision. All we are trying to no, no. All we are trying to do with this motion is secure the immediate future of the Blues Festival for 2022 and hand it over to an independent charitable trust. Secure the future immediately, hand it over to an independent trust. What's the issue with that? I'm going to the board now, I'm going to call the name Walter. Yes, uh, uh, <laughs> the amendment reads uh, to, Please, to, to, to pay for the cleansing and to underwrite the cost of the Leisure Trust and pay yeah. for the and pay I, for the technical this, 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 this guarantees this guarantees the future of the Force of the Please, I see the magician here. So if I ask you, please. Calm down and sit down. Please do. Oh, it's just common, common, just common place. Thank you very much. We're now going to a name vote for your amendment, sir. Thank you. Which is to support the amendment. Save the blues. Save the blues. So, Councillor Adman. Again. Sure. Councillor Harmon. Or. Councillor Harmon. Yes. Councillor Harmon.